today and it finally uh, landed in, the air in uh, Edwards, forced there because of bad weather at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Terry Drinkwater is at Edwards. Morton Dean is at the Kennedy Space Center. First, let's go to Terry in preparation for all this. And the weather looks great there, Terry. Weather is uh, impressive indeed, uh, as good here as it uh, was bad in Florida. The astronauts right now are passing the California coast. They are approximately 100 miles from touchdown uh, here on the runway directly behind me. Let's listen. Their elevation, something around 100,000 feet at this time. The spacecraft is... Bob Coppin, this one is switched to manual flight mode now at 77,000 feet. Mach 2.1, range 51 miles. He's back in automatic. There it is, Terry. The very first view, the long-range camera. It looks to be a... It looks to be a perfectly nominal landing, according to the communications we're hearing from the 42 miles from touchdown here. The sonic boom we should hear shortly. Terry? Yes, Mark Dean? It's worth remembering that this is a glider now. It has no engine power. It has one shot at that big runway Mark and only one shot. 66,000 feet and a range of 36 nautical miles. Very steep descent as always. Astronaut Crippen landed here once before, the very first shuttle, the Columbia. Now he's piloting the Challenger down. Descending about 15 times faster than a commercial jet. Some ride. Challenger approaching the heading alignment circle at an altitude of 57,000 feet. Mach 1.2. When uh, we approach the heading alignment circle, it's about that time uh, that we intercepted that uh, we expect uh, Bob Griffin to be taken over into the manual mode from the automatic system. The manual mode means, uh, astronaut Dave Hilmers, that he'll be flying the machine, right? That's correct. They've been in space six days. Everyone seems to have concluded this the most perfect of all the shuttle missions from all respects. It's not yet visible to the uh, naked eye here at 45,000 feet. Edwards Air Force Base, it should be soon. And we should be listening for those sonic booms. Range 23 miles. Terry, a whole range of NASA officials said this morning how pleased they were with the performance of America's first woman in space, Sally Ride. She got very high marks. You know, she has uh, a few. There it is. You heard them, I trust, the, the wind the sonic is boom. Uh, directly from the south at 10 knots. You know, there's a small uh, delegation um, of, from Sally Ride's uh, school, Westlake School. Altitude 34,000 feet. It's touching the hack now. 18 miles to touchdown. They knew more about the weather than we did then, Terry. Well, they did. They, did. they they chanced coming here because... Uh, Out of 30,000 feet and 257 knots. At this point, as they start the sweeping turn around the heading alignment circle... Beginning the, the wide sweeping left turn around the... The uh, G-forces will start to build up slightly to as uh, close to 2 Gs at this point. Does that make it very uncomfortable for the crew? Then? No, that's, that's very uh, well within the comfort range. 25,000 feet, 260 knots. Again, no engine power on board. It is a glider. It has one chance at a successful landing and only one chance. The landing here on the dirt runway, the hard-packed uh, surface of the Mojave Desert, not on the paved runway. Uh, 20,000 feet. And we should be close to uh, final approach here. Knots. The shuttle will land. 
Naked eye Sorry, here at Edwards now. Challenger turning final now. Beautiful yeah. picture. Right on the nominal track. Uh, flight dynamics officer Willis Bolt reports. Touchdown speed will be about 109, 109 miles faster than a DC-9, and the shuttle is about the size of a DC-9. On right slope and turning toward the center line. 14,000 feet. It's about Beautiful this, pictures. About this time, we'll be picking up the microwave landing system, miles. which will give very precise information to the runway. Good. Surface wind 180 at 10. Surface wind 180 at 10. They'll get part of their crosswind here, uh, DTO, the test objective that we were trying to get uh, for many flights. Uh, we'll get some crosswind. speed at 282 knots. Bob Crippen at the controls, Terry. On center line. We'd hope to get a real crosswind test at the Cape this morning, but that was, uh, that was not to be. Four people up top, Crippen, Houck, Ride, and Fabian sitting on the... 500 feet. Flight deck, Thagrid, all alone, knots. down below. That's correct. At about 2,000 feet above ground level, they'll be tr transitioning from this very steep 19-degree glide slope to a more gentle 1.5-degree glide slope. As good as these pictures are, they're, they're not as good as other ones we've all seen because NASA did not have any feet. cameras here that uh, uh, they've had past uh, landings at Edwards obviously anticipating, like everyone else, uh, the cameramen uh, of NASA all at uh, the Cape down there. Terry, the family here it comes. the astronauts the, are... There we are. Come. Wheels down. Takes place about yeah. uh, two or three hundred feet off the ground. Yeah. And touchdown. Beautiful landing. For the sixth time here at Edwards, the shuttle coming back. Up six days. The end of a mission that uh, NASA calls uh, just perfect. Heaven knows that landing looked uh, perfect to me, didn't it, to you at the Cape there? It sure did. It's beginning to look easy, Dave. Looks very good. Excellent. Good landing. Matter of fact, We've gotten to the point at which it's difficult to uh, beat the previous landing. They're all so perfect now. There's not much uh, better that we can do. A lot of excitement uh, here at Kennedy Space Center, Terry. The families of the astronauts were here for the landing that didn't happen, and they are watching this on television in a room over at the crew quarters. An exciting moment for them. You can see the uh, little bit of dust that it... Uh, it kicked up, and the dust is staying there because there's such a light uh, breeze. A historic flight. The first American spacewoman, Sally Ride. The next flight uh, that will have a woman in the crew will be the 12th shuttle flight. Judy Resnick will fly on board that flight, and the first uh, black astronaut, black American astronaut to fly, will fly on the next shuttle flight. That's correct. Tank Colonel Guy Bluford. Guy Bluford, and that uh, is expected to come in late August or mid-August now. Exact schedule. Exact schedule for that uh, flight will probably be somewhat changed. That we added, the teleprinter are not required at Edwards. Looks good to me, Terry. Well, it certainly does here. Uh, NASA has just announced that uh, the uh, post-landing uh, procedures will be nominal. The astronauts uh, will stay aboard for about uh, an hour, perhaps a little less, uh, depending upon how effectively the 30 or so NASA uh, technicians in the team can uh, uh, safely connect the uh, craft to the support systems and check to be sure there are no toxic gases uh, in the area. You can see the convoy uh, approaching the shuttle uh, right now. A very successful day here at uh, Edwards, uh, the end of another mission of shuttle.
Successful as ride, Terry Drinkwater at Edwards. Thank you very much. Mort Dean down at the Cape, we thank you, too, for this special report. I'll go further. It's the prettiest landing I have seen of all six. It is. Oh, just, just perfect. You want to be on it. And as many times as you see it, you still have to convince yourself that they've just orbited the Earth nearly 100 yeah. times and are sitting down on a runway as if they <laughs> landed from San Diego this morning. For the East Coast, this has been a special report.